Welcome to the graphing calculator tips video. All right, so I've made a graphing calculator tips uh, page for you under all review and I'm doing it under U4 since all your other review right now is under the U4 tab. So uh, to get to that, just go to all review and then U4 calculator tips. Once I finish this link, I will put it right there as well. Okay. So for this uh, video, we're going to use number 16 for your review because it's a calculator active problem. Um, I have included these tips over here, these like how to's for different things you need to do. And um, you already have this actually, I gave it to you last year before the summer started, but in case you can't find it, here it is again. Okay, so first of all, don't forget calculus is rad. So be sure that your mode of your calculator is in a radian. So you would, you would arrow down there and hit enter to select that. And down here, if you notice, is the key press history. So everything I'm pressing, you can see right there. All right, so let's go back to our Y1. We're going to use this function. And um, so in the original function, we're going to have on Y1, we're going to have our velocity. Now, many times Y1 will be our position function. And then the derivative is the velocity. But in this question, they gave us the velocity. So you're going to put that in Y1. And the derivative, which is y3, would be your acceleration. And so somewhere on your paper, you should write that just so you don't forget while you're working. So your velocity is in y1. And I see I've written it right here on b part. And your acceleration is y3. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is going to read your question. And, and you're going to notice, oh, there is a limited domain, right? So when you look at that, you're like, oh, we're only looking from 0 to 2. I highly recommend at that point that you go to your window and you have your window adjust to this. So the y min or the x min is the first value and the x max is the second value. So go over here and just type them in, arrow down and type them in and then you'll be done with that. So let's go back to our y1 and let's look at some things it's asking. First of all, what time does the bug turn around? So here we're talking about velocity. So if we're going in one direction to the right or to the left, we must stop before we turn around. So we're going to graph it and look and see what that looks like. All right. So right now, if you notice, this may happen to you. You may have both both things graphed and you don't want both things graphed right now because it's only asking us about velocity and it's a little hard to find our intercepts and stuff when everything is graphed. So when you go to y equals, you notice this is highlighted. This is not highlighted, but this is also highlighted. We don't need the derivative, which is the acceleration. We're only looking at velocity. So if you hit, let me clear these keystrokes. If you put your cursor there and then hit enter, if you notice, it turns that off, which means it won't graph it. All right, so now let's graph it. Now we're only looking at the velocity function. So um, at the beginning, the velocity is positive, which means if it's positive, it's going to the right. And then it stops, goes as it passes through 0. And then it goes to the left, passes with 0, and goes to the right again. So if it's negative, it's going to the left. If it's positive, it's going to the right. And again, it doesn't have to change directions where the zeros are. This could have gone down and bounced back up, and then it would have hit zero but not changed directions. So for it to change directions or turn around, it actually has to go from positive to negative or negative to positive. So in order to find this, you could trace, but trace does not give you an accurate answer to three decimal places. So do not use trace. Instead, you're going to calculate the zero. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. So Right here, if you look on the instructions, you can follow those along with me. Calculating the zero should be right here, second trace zero. That's solving equations or number two. So we're going to go second and we're going to calculate. Second trace is calculate because it, that, that lets you calculate things. And we're going to either scroll down or hit two for calculating the zero. Now, when it says left bound, what it's going to do is it's going to put the zero in between two different numbers. So the left bound goes to the left of it. You can use your arrow key if you would like, and you can arrow all the way over there. And then you're going to hit enter. Notice this is to the left of the zero. The zero is right here and we're to the left. And then it's going to say right bound. So we are going to go all the way over. Now don't get right on the point of intersection because you want to make sure you can go above and below. I always go until I can see. I call this little blinky guy Spidey. I always go past or Spidey's past it. I hit enter 
They usually ask me to guess. I don't care to guess. If you felt like it, you could go here and get close to make sure your answer is kind of close to it, right? If you wanted to. So it should be somewhere around 0 0.333. But when you hit enter this uh, one more time, it's going to give you the exact zero. So that is your first zero. So to find the second zero, so you're going to hit enter and it's all done. To find the second zero, you're going to hit second calc again, and I'm going to show you a different way to do it this time. It's a way that I think is a little easier. Two. So your left bound, you've got to go all the way over here, and Spidey's rather slow. So instead of like going Spidey all the way over here with the arrow, you can just click a number. This is zero, this is one, and this is two. So if I just click one on my left bound, it will put it at one. Watch, enter. So see your left bound's now at one. And your right bound, you know you can go to two because it'll definitely cover that. So instead of, I could spidey over, but it takes forever. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna hit two, which makes it X is two. When I hit enter, notice spidey's here. So here's my right bound is at one, my, my left bound is at two. I don't feel like guessing, so I'm just gonna hit enter. And it gives me the zero of X equals 1.5663324. Be very careful when you're using these numbers for intermediate rounding. You should use five or six decimal places at this point and type all of those in to get a value of something. Now, if you don't want to type all of them in, there's one more awesome thing you could do, and that's called storing. If you notice, Spidey is still blinking here. So you do have to hit enter one more time, and Spidey is not blinking. If you do not have the TI-84 plus CE, if you've got a, just the regular TI-84 that's the older one that doesn't graph in color, when you hit the enter the second time, you'll still see this, but these numbers will go away, and that's fine. So as soon as Spidey's gone, but you can still see the zero, or you can't if you have a different calculator, here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna cancel, I'm gonna clear my key presses so you can see. I'm gonna hit store, and that means this is gonna store my answer. And the answer is what we just calculated, and you can pick where to store it. You can store it in A, B, C. Alpha is like your alphabet, right? So you're looking for these characters. So I'm gonna store it into alpha A. It doesn't matter what you store it in, you can store it in anything you want. When you hit enter, it's gonna give you that number and you can verify it. This is really cool. So now if you wanna find like the velocity at the zero, you can, which would just be zero, but if you wanna find numbers at there, you could just use that instead of like typing in the number again. Okay, so let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna show you how to find intersections just in case you're not sure. So we're gonna find the velocity of the bug when the acceleration equals three. So A of T is the acceleration. So first you had to find the T when A of T is three. That means if you look at your Y, don't forget your acceleration's in Y3. So now you no longer need Y1, so turn that off. And you need to turn your acceleration on by hitting enter. So see, I just hit enter and it turns it on. If I go up, you can see that's what I'm graphing now. So I'm gonna graph the acceleration function, but I don't wanna plug three into the acceleration function. I wanna find out where the acceleration function intersects three. So what I do is I graph three, and then once you hit graph, it's gonna graph the line three along with your acceleration. So this is the point that your acceleration is going to hit that, I uh, hit three. So to find that, you can't calculate the zero because it's not the zero. You wanna calculate the intersection. So to calculate the intersection, it's right down here, finding points of intersection. You're gonna type the functions in and you're gonna hit second trace, which again is to calculate. And this time you're gonna do hit number five, which is intersect. So it's gonna ask you curve. So if you notice, even though it's a straight line, this is considered a curve. You have two different equations, AKA curves, that you want to find the intersection of. So the first curve, you hit enter. The second curve, you hit enter. And it says, do you want to guess? No. Now, many students try to put their little spideys right on here, but that for if you have a black and white calculator that's all the graphs are the same color, that's going to be difficult. You don't have to be on top of them if you noticed I was not. You just have to be close to them. So if you had two points of intersection, you need to get close to those points, but you don't have to be exactly on there. So when you hit enter, it's going to give you the point of intersection. Now, this is the value that I do need to plug into my velocity. The second part of the question said, hey, 
find the velocity at this point. So before I showed you how to store, but this time I really need this value. So I'm gonna store this value. But remember, Spidey's still blinking. So I'm gonna hit enter. So Spidey is not blinking anymore. And then I am going to hit store, which stores this answer. And I've already used A, so let me store this value into B. So alpha B is where I'm gonna put this one. Enter, and that is the value. Now, to find this value, I need to find the velocity. And remember, velocity is Y1. So you can go alpha trace, which gives you all your variables. And I'm going to hit 1 for Y1. And you have to use parentheses because this is function notation. So you don't want to do Y1 times B. You want to put B inside of Y1. So again, you put alpha B in parentheses. And you can hit Enter. And that gives you alpha B. Now, if you didn't want to store the value, you could still type it in, but you need to type in multiple decimals, and here's why. If you hit, now sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't, but you always want to make sure. So if you want, if you go alpha trace and you find Y1 again, and instead of doing, doing that, say you'd round it and you just put in 1.23 or even 233, and whoopsie, hang on, delete parenthesis, and you hit enter, notice how the, the answer is a, a decimal place off, because you always have to round to three decimals. So if you would have rounded intermediately, which is means rounding in the middle of your problem, intermediate, you would have gotten this answer incorrect, because this answer will be accepted as 105, or rounded as 105, but 106 would be incorrect. Um, another way to, to rewrite that is you can just scroll up and highlight an answer that you want and hit enter. So there's a couple of different tricks you can use for the calculator. Okay, I hope that helped you guys. Have an awesome day.